Okay, welcome to tutorial three. We now get into the, into the real action, the agent phase. The agent phase is really important. In the main game, the computer game, you had diplomats, you had assassins, you had spies, you had all sorts of things going on. For the board game, these are crafted into a set of cards called action cards. And we'll put a, we'll a close-up of an action card in here so you can see it. Um, I'm holding one here. I'll hold it forward a little bit so that you can get a guide of what I'm going to take you through. There are three sections to it. There's a symbol up here, which is an action that the agent can actually do. There's an amount of gold here you can cash your card for. Or there's a special event at the bottom that can be used in certain phases. So in this case, what I have is a card which is Incite Riots. So it cause two unrest markers on an enemy territory and therefore stop it raising any tax income until those riots are subdued somehow. And at the bottom, I've got something called Prepared Battlefield. It can be played in the campaign phase, allows the general to upgrade or downgrade the terrain level of the region prior to a battle. We may see that in action later when we come to the campaign phase and fight a battle. At the beginning of the game, everybody ends up with five of these until they expand their number of agents, so they replenish. They've kept two each, both have got two each, so I'm going to just deal some out. And I'm going to do the, this, this phase. Carthage is going first. So you should have up in front of you now the five cards that Carthage has got. And they're an interesting mix. So let me, let me first of all work my way through the symbols. So we have a burning building. This is a sabotage card. It allows you to have an agent try and burn down an enemy barracks or burn down an enemy market. Pretty interesting. Um, the fish and urn is a trade card. You can make some money by trading with another party. The eye is a spy card. It lets you look at another army and see what's in it. The scroll is a treaty card. It allows you to talk to another nation and try and improve your status with them. And the mass of people with their um, various swords and tridents and spears is a riot card. It allows you to cause riots in the enemy territory. So I've got those five to choose from, but to do those I have to use the two agents on the board. There's some money we could cash, but none of it looks that exciting to me, so we're pretty well off for money. They won't be doing that. And at the bottom there are five different special events, and it's decided whether you want to keep those. So determined troops makes you better in battle. Disruptive storms annoys an enemy fleet by pushing it around a little bit on the board. Might be useful here. Willing volunteers they've got twice. That allows you to recruit extra mercenaries for free. That's a really handy card for the Carthaginians because in this scenario they've got two areas that are mercenary areas where they built barracks so they can actually recruit mercenaries. So I'm probably going to be wanting to keep those actually. Um, and they've got prepared battlefield, which allows you to reduce or increase the terrain in a region before you fight a battle. So given that, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to keep the two willing volunteer cards, because they sound a real winner for some extra troops later on in the game for free. And that sounds a bargain. But I think what we'll do is we will use the trade card. So I'm going to play this trade card, first of all, to do some trade with Greece. And when you're trading with a friendly nation, you get three gold each for doing it. We don't bother with the Greeks, they're non-players, but we get three gold for Carthage. But with a neat trick, because they have caught trade fleet. And having bought trade fleet, they're especially good at trade, which they were, so they get a bonus gold for that. So that's handy. So that card is spent. And to do that, you just need to be somewhere appropriate to negotiate a trade. Well... They've got one in Athens already, so they're perfectly placed. So this one is discarded, and it's already used to allow that to happen. That's done. So that's one of their two actions. Now, which of the others shall they go for? Well, I really like to keep the determined troops for a fight, so they're going to keep that. Um, but some riot sounds like quite a nice idea if they can get back far enough. Let me let me start. Let me look at whether we can cause some damage with the other one. Well, it's very easy because you can go from port to port. So you go. One, two, and they're in Rome. Lovely. Right, we're going to start some riots. They're going to incite some riots in Rome, which when we get to the next taxation phase means Rome would not get their three gold from Rome. That seems worth doing. Bit of chaos. And we mark that up with some little black markers. At the moment we've got some jemmy type things here. Just going to find a couple of black ones. I'm going to put those there. 
Um, just to mention, we, we're probably moving away from using the gems by a general vote back to using little markers, um, even though I like the sparkly 3D personally. So that's it. Carthage has done its phase. Let's have a look at the Romans. Let's see what they've got. So going through again, they've got a, they've got a trade card again. So probably going to do some trade. They've got three. Um, these are protests, so they only do one unrest each. They're not as powerful as a riot. But this one is an assassination attempt, <laughs> the, the bloody dagger. So they could have somebody go and try and kill someone. Well, that sounds, that sounds worth, a, worth a dip. In terms of here, uh, they have got disruptive storms. Again, something that could affect a Roman navy at sea. Untimely death is a random enemy general dying. I mean, they did die. They died from disease. They died from accidents. Force march lets them move a bit further. That could be useful. Uh, epic envelopment. Oh, that's a good one for Carthaginian armies with lots of cavalry. Hmm. Difficult decision whether to do an assassination or keep the epic envelopment. And then inspired general, which makes your general fight better. So I'm liking keeping epic envelopment and inspired general. I'm fancy keeping those. Um, and I actually am going to play this one in the agent phase. Untimely death. So untimely death means a random general of an opposing faction dies. So I can't choose which one. But somebody has had an unfortunate event. And actually, we generally decide that by using these cards or rolling a dice. So I'm just going to use these cards, mix them up, one to four. The generals go with them. And I'm going to ask my good friend Matt here to slaughter a general, please. Yeah, number one. Number one has died. Him. Must be this chap. No, no, oh, it's the guy, it's the one they wanted. It's him there in Sicily. It's the guy in Sicily with the main armor, army who is actually their talented general, Hasdrubal Barker, oh. has either had a heart attack or fallen off a horse or something unpleasant has happened to him. Now, that's a, that's a pretty big event in terms of the turn. He's gone. That army is actually generalless at the moment, which makes it a lot more vulnerable when it comes to the uh, um, campaign phase. Let's do another card. So that was the untimely death one. We're going to do the trade card and keep the other one. And the trade card is going to be, for Carthage, is going to be trade with Athens. Which, uh, um, with Rome, sorry. So it's a, the next one's a trade card. So it's a trade card for the Romans who are trading with the barbarians. Rome doesn't have a trade fleet, but it is friendly with the barbarians, so it gets itself three gold. Okay. Get it right in here. So that one's gone. That's been played. And they're going to keep this. And the ultimately death has been played. And they've each got three action cards held back. Now note how I didn't try the assassination. Um, mainly because I got, we got lucky and killed the one we wanted anyway. So had I not killed him, I might have had to go at him with one of these and try to use one of my agents to assassinate him. All part of the chaos of the game. I'm going to add on the agent cards. You've got a choice of three levels of chaos. The cards in the random events have got some red items, some yellow items, and the rest are in every game. If you want to, you can reduce the level of chaos by just agreeing not to use red random events or red and yellow random events and take most of the chaos out. Um, to be honest, for all of us playing, the chaos is a big part of the fun and it does feel very realistic. And even the bad chaos is not usually totally game changing. It's very rare that it's totally game changing. Um, so I recommend keeping them in. Um, if we run competitions, we'll probably take the red ones out just to take a little bit of the edge off the, the randomness in there. But it's all tightly controlled because the pack allows you to choose your level of chaos. That's the agent phase done. I'm sure you can see already it's pretty simple, but the decisions are quite challenging. And the chaos it can cause and the intrigue it can cause is quite, is quite chaotic. Rome now is missing three gold from here next time. But... Uh, we're missing a four-star general who's, who's collapsed over there. So we've got a general free army that's a bit vulnerable on Sicily. What will the campaign phase hold? Watch the next video and find out. <laughs>